much and good morning colleagues. Uh, my name is Dion Tustin. I'm the Chief Executive Officer at the Bureau of Market Research at the University of South Africa and I will be facilitating today's online event and I would like to start greeting you all by saying it's quite chilly in Pretoria this morning. Uh, I think the winter has arrived and it's in full swing and we sincerely need some good incentives or stimulation to warm us up this morning. And just talking about the youth, most certainly I believe will heat up proceedings, which uh, are attended today by both local and international audiences with a keen interest in youth matters. If we ponder colleagues about the youth of today, I think we will all agree, yes, youth matters and i trust that more than a uh, hundred online delegates attending today's event or planning still to come into the vault and i see there's already 34 in the vault dr basson will have youth high on their priority lists now most certainly colleagues our country is prioritizing youth by devoting an entire month of june to youth matters in South Africa, 1 to 30 June is Youth Month, which makes the online gathering, I think, most suitable of today. And the theme, interestingly, for Youth Month in South Africa reads as follows, and I'm going to read it twice so you can also see how it nicely fits into today's webinar. It says, accelerating collaborations and opportunities to improve the lives of the youth. And if you will allow me to again repeat that. Accelerating collaborations and opportunities to improve the lives of the youth. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust that you will agree that today's webinar will also, which crosses actually international boundaries because we also have international guests uh, attending today. Uh, it provides an ideal opportunity for collaborations to address pertinent youth challenges faced by society at large. And likewise, I believe that collaboration and collective efforts most certainly provides a strong platform to improve the lives of youth, which are nowadays, I think you will agree, entrenched by many so psychosocial challenges. And at today's webinar, colleagues, you will also witness research evidence and be exposed to the reality of very pertinent challenges faced by today's youth. And I also believe that many of these are generic across borders. And you will also be spoiled and treated and entertained by professional inputs by our leading conversationalist, which will, send the which will set the scene for collaborative inputs and opportunities for the online audience also to share their experience and collectively find ways to address pertinent youth matters. In today's webinar, colleagues, you will also have the opportunity to listen to the voice of the young, and we look forward to inputs by future, Nguatu and Sibu Sisiwe, who are also already nestled in the online corridors, I hope, Dr. Basson, of today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to mention specific names because you are all today our guest of honor. And you are greeted with a lot of thankfulness for attending and also excitement on what the webinar will produce and which outcomes will transpire in an aftermatch of this engagement. And I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, if I look at today's program or menu, if you like, jointly linked, lined up by the Bureau of Market Research Youth Research Unit, led by Dr. Antoinette Basson, and Youth Dynamics, led by Andrea Kraushaar, you will see that you are in for a treat. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the preparations of today's webinar resembles the outcome of collective planning by both the BMR and YDX, or Youth Dynamics, who will both feature as the cobots of our webinar and leading conversationalist to address and interrogate youth topic matters and to hopefully also inspire your participation. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the event will however be limited to 60 minutes in also respect of your busy time schedules, uh, which obviously introduces a risk of full participation by all members on the, in the online audience. However, as we nowadays know, digital meetings fortunately awards and rewards us an opportunity to participate in the event by using the chat box function in the Teams meeting platform to post any comments or questions as the event unfolds. You are therefore encouraged to use the chat function to ensure that you receive the full benefits of active participation. And even a simple hi or a short greeting or even a facial expression are welcome at today's event. Now, our leading conversation list for today, and I prefer to refer them uh, in our digital space as our chatbots, are Dr. Antoinette Passon. There we go. She's already on screen there. She's research director at the Bureau of Market Research and also heading our youth research unit. And then we also have Ms. Andrea Kraushaar. If you can maybe just switch on your camera for a second, Andrea, if you don't mind. She is also a Research and Insights Director at Youth Dynamics. There we go. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much. There we go, colleagues. So, colleagues, Dr. Basson will lead the conversation by reflecting firstly on some pertinent research findings resulting from the Youth Ambassador Research Program which will include, among others, a focus on substance use and abuse, online sexual exploitation and also the abuse and abuse and also cyberbullying. Chatbot Antoinette, the stage is yours for the next 20 minutes. Thank you, Dr. Basson. Thank you so much, Prof, and good morning, colleagues. It's lovely to have you all with us this morning. Thank you for that introduction, Prof. I'm going to start this session with a presentation, like Prof said, on our latest research information that we gathered amongst the South African youth on substance abuse, um, online sexual exploitation, and violence. I'm just quickly going to switch off my camera and share my presentation with you. Uh, so let me quickly share. Wonderful. So this presentation today, I'm going to focus on the state of youth well-being in South Africa based on the latest research information gathered by the Youth Research Unit of the Bureau of Market Research. And you are most welcome, colleagues. Please, if you want to ask a question like Prof said, you're most welcome to use the chat box. You can note it down. We're going to have a bit of a discussion later on in the session. You are most welcome. Now, we all know that based on the recent population estimates that South Africa has a youthful population, which presents the country both with challenges as well as opportunities as well. However, despite efforts uh, to foster a socioeconomic progress, um, we've seen that South Africa still have a lot of problems or challenges that we need to address. These include uh, challenges such as poor educational outcomes, unemployment, excessive drug use, alcohol and violence. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, the recent COVID-19 pandemic has really affected the South African population in a profound manner. We saw that individuals were faced with isolation, restriction of movement and economic shutdown, which had far reaching implications for the well-being of youth in South Africa. And it replaced again emphasis on the importance of support structures being available in South Africa. Now, at the Youth Research Unit, we have conducted extensive research on young people in South Africa, like most of you will be aware of. And we recently launched the Youth Ambassador Research Program that actually brings together young people between the ages of about 13 to 20 years, not only to participate in research, but also to give their input, to inform the research projects that we are um conducting at the Youth Research Unit. And today I'm going to share with you our first research uh, findings gathered from this wonderful initiatives. Let me just quickly go here. Yeah. 
<clears throat> it's said that the South African youth, ladies and gentlemen, is growing up in a very challenging context at the moment. It's often reported that young people are experiencing a poly crisis, meaning that children and young people in South Africa is experiencing simultaneously occurrence of several challenges at the same time. And these include substance use and abuse, gender-based violence, as well as other forms of violence, such as uh, cyberbullying, as well as online sexual exploitation and abuse. And you will agree with me, colleagues, that we need research evidence on these issues to really understand the poly crisis faced by the youth and to improve their health and well-being. It's not only critical to look at the health and well-being of young people today, but also for their future development and economic productivity in our country. So the research methodology that we use within our youth ambassador program is a hybrid approach. So we included both an online approach where we gathered research through the completion of an online survey, as well as a paper based approach where young people completed a paper based questionnaire. We were very fortunate that for our first round in this project, we managed to include 1,124 young people from all nine provinces in South Africa who were participating in our study and completed the online survey. Just a quick glimpse at who actually participated in our study. We had about 56% female participants, and most of these young people were in the age groups of about 14 to 17 years from the grades 9 to 11, and they were uh, scattered across the whole of South Africa. And uh, we're very proud to say that this was actually our first national study where we were able to include all nine South Africa. African provinces. I'm now going to continue to share with you the research findings, colleagues, that came from this study, and I'm firstly going to focus on substance use and abuse. And we all know that the harmful use of substances remains a growing concern amongst the youth in South Africa, despite several awareness campaigns as well as interventions aimed at young people. We firstly look at tobacco use in our study, and the YRU study confirmed that young people use a variety of tobacco products, including the e-cigarettes or vaping that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And that also creates new challenges for us with regard to the protection of young people in South Africa. It's very, it's noteful that from the research results that stressful life events definitely motivates or contributes to the use of tobacco products amongst the youth. Alcohol use and abuse, together with the harmful use of tobacco products, the wire use study also identified the high levels of alcohol consumption amongst the youth, which are often a, re a result in risky behavior. Despite the detrimental consequences of alcohol use and abuse about young people, young people still remain reluctant to seek support and to reach out for help. In this context, as you will see on the screen, we found that approximately 62% of our participants consumed alcohol during the past 12 months, of which almost half of them uh, admitted that they were drunk. Unfortunately, we still find in our research that our parents and caregivers re, uh, have a lack of knowledge and it's find it difficult sometimes to reach out to their children and provide the necessary support that they need to deal with these challenges. Therefore, they still need information and skills to respond appropriately. Concerningly, the YRU at BMR study identified that illegal substances are relatively easy accessible amongst young people in South Africa, and dacha or cannabis still remains the drug of choice. 
In addition, other hardcore drugs, including Nyalpe, Mandrax, and cocaine are used. And concerningly, it's noteworthy that the study identified high levels of the use of over-the-counter medication, which are often seen by young people as being less harmful. Furthermore, the study also identified that the ex uh, uh, Furthermore, the study also identified the possible impact of the COVID-19, which resulted in a possible increase of drug use amongst young people. As we will see on the screen, approximately 33% agreed that the COVID-19 pandemic contributed to an increase in substance use and abuse amongst young people in South Africa mainly because of school closures, children being at home, being bored, also for stress and further exploration identified that a lot of parents have lost their jobs and due to unemployment and economic difficulties, children were extremely stressed during this time. The study also identified that children mentioned that they were quite depressed because of the situation, and this often motivated them to become more involved in the youth uh, in the use of substances. I'm now going to turn to the next area of exploration of the study, and that was the online sexual exploitation and abuse. Colleagues, I'm sh sharing with you the main findings that came out of this study, and uh, we'll definitely be able to share the report with you after the webinar today. The while you study further explore, explored this area of online sexual exploitation and abuse, and it's often seen as the fastest growing form of violence against children and young people, not only in South Africa, but across the world. So we firstly look at the uh, access to the internet. An increasing number of young people in South Africa have access to devices and the internet. In this study, we found approximately 74% confirmed that they do have access to the internet. The internet increase, increased the likelihood of children to be exposed to different forms of online sexual exploitation and abuse, including the exposure to pornographic images online. You will also see on the screen that the internet is mostly accessed by children from their smartphones or at home, and 40% of the participants agreed that the recent COVID pandemic definitely increased um, the use of the internet. We know that a lot of children had to do school activities online as well during the COVID, and 24% of them actually noticed changes in the content on the internet since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that online sexual exploitation and abuse occurs in many different forms. And in this study, we've specifically looked at the exposure to pornographic images. 71% of the participants have seen that they have confirmed that they have seen the stomach images online. And most of these images, colleagues, were of a sexual nature. We also found that 87% have confirmed that they've seen pornographic images online. And in comparison with our previous studies conducted at the Youth Research Unit, we found a significant increase from around 60% to 87% in our latest research study. We also found that a variety of online platforms were actually uh, uh, visited by children where they have came across these images. And in the questionnaire, we did define the terms so that we can be sure that young people who participated in the study understood what we were asking them. So you will see again in our research, Facebook came out most prominently, also Google search engine, Instagram, WhatsApp, and TikTok. And these findings were quite similar to some of our previous research studies. The first reaction, and we cannot ignore the emotional and behavior impact of premature exposure to pornographic images on young people. It's absolutely profound, and it's got a negative impact on young people's emotional well-being and behavior. 
And the first reaction of young people is usually to close the site. However, more concerningly, our study again identified that a number of young people keep on looking or search for more images when um, they come across pornographic images online. We also find that they have uh, experienced mixed feelings. They felt overwhelmed and they also struggle to keep up with their schoolwork. Very concerningly, again, the element of addiction. Children search for more pornographic images. That was about 18% of our participants that participated in this study who have seen pornographic images online. Very important, we need to look at available support initiatives because it's so pertinent issue and we keep on seeing an increase of young people being exploited online. Unfortunately, we only find that 30% of the participants reported that anyone has ever attempted to talk to them about the risk of being exposed to online images, and only 10% of them try to get support when they actually see these images. We still find in our research studies, colleagues, that there's a difference that between physical abuse and online abuse. And very often young people are reluctant to report forms of online abuse. And we need to encourage this amongst our um, young people in South Africa. Also, we need to create more accessible support for young people. We further exploit and ask young people what do they consider, what will be the most effective way to deal with this problem. And we found that 34% actually said personal therapy or personal interaction with an individual who has the necessary skills and knowledge. 21% say peer groups, 15% online counselling and 15% support groups at school. And I think this really emphasized the importance of bringing in support initiatives for young people in South Africa that are exposed to online sexual exploitation and abuse. Colleagues, I'm now turning to the third segment that we investigated in our research study, and that was online violence or cyberbullying. And we all are aware of the fact that victims of cyberbullying continue to remain very prominent amongst uh, South African youth. And we very often hear about incidents of cyberbullying despite many, many interventions over the years. The Youth Research Unit also have conducted research on this topic for the past 10 years, and we have a, a lot of research information that can be used to inform um, interventions. So we found in our study that about 24% of the respondents confirmed that they have experienced um, online bullying or cyberbullying. In most cases, these consisted of false statements being made about them, threatening messages, being ganged up at online by a group of their peers and being isolated or pushed away. Colleagues in our previous research studies, being pushed away or isolated has a tremendous effect on a young person. It's really got a significant emotional impact on a young person when they feel that they are being isolated or pushed away by their peers. We also find that most of the, of the participants said that in many cases, bullying is motivated by peer pressure, also family problems, exposure to online violent content, as well as online gaming uh, that's being played by young people. And we know there's a lot of content in our online games that's got a negative impact on the behavior of children and young people. <clears throat> Also, we found that about 35% of the young people who actually experience online or cyberbullying reported the incident. And you will see that this is much higher in comparison to online sexual abuse or incidents of being exposed to online pornographic material. Children are willing to report incidents of bullying, although this can also be increased amongst our young people. Most of the young people who have reported the incident 
also said that they did receive support and that it was helpful. And I think there's been many interventions over the years, and this is actually having a very much a positive effect. While we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to issues of online sexual exploitation and abuse. We also again explored the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, and there's still a lot of research information needed on this topic and, and, and that we can, can learn more about our experiences of young people in South Africa. And we found that about 35% reported that incidents of online bullying increased during the COVID-19 pandemic. And that was mainly because there were more activity online and a lot of young people said that now there's no personal contact. It's becoming easier to actually bully somebody online um, because personal contact was so restricted during the COVID-19 pandemic as well. Furthermore, we also ask our respondents if they have ever bullied someone online and about 8% of them, that's almost one in every 10 respondent, confirmed that they have bullied someone online. And this was mainly motivated by feelings of anger, revenge and peer pressure. So very often they were bullied and then they uh, this motivated their behaviour to bully somebody else online. So we can really see that young people experience intense feelings, intense feelings of anger and sadness and revenge when they go through such an experience. Colleagues, there's no doubt that youth are facing several challenges in South Africa, and these challenges have a negative impact on their emotional and behavioral well-being, not only on in the individual, but also on their families and the broader community in South Africa. Although several attempts have been made to address these problems, it seems that there are existing gaps that are further increased due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic. Considering the impact on the uh, pandemic and the increased vulnerability of our youth, there's an urgent need for us for, to come together and to, to have a multi-sectoral effort to effectively address the challenges impacted on the well-being of the youth in South Africa. I, I just presented the key findings of our research. Unfortunately, this is only an hour webinar, but you are most welcome to contact me if you have any inquiries about our unit or the research work. Uh, we are finalizing the report. The report will be available with more detailed research information. You are welcome to contact me on the email address on the screen if you would like, uh, like to have access to the research information. I'm now going to stop sharing my presentation and hand back to Prof. Dion Dustin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Basson. And we also allow the audience to engage with Dr. Basson towards the end of the seminar. Uh, but just a reminder, and I see the chat boxes are already filling up. So just a reminder, maybe once again, to please post your comments or questions in the chat box. So this will also guide our two chatbots to prepare responses at the end of the seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, let us now also further listen to our next chatbot, Andrea Kraushaar, who I already mentioned is from research in, the Research and Insights Director at Youth Dynamics. Um, Andrea, could you please help us to explore generations and provide insights to the size, importance and impact of the youth markets as well as the challenges, behavioral trends that you're picking up and concerns regarding youth, which are also prevalent in the research work that you do. Andrea, your stage is open for the next 20 minutes. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, um, Prof. Tustin. I uh, just want to check that you can all hear me. Um, uh, and Antoinette, if you could just allow me to share my screen, please, um, so that I can just share my presentation, that would be great. Hey, Andrea, I'm just quickly trying to help Thank you to share you. your screen. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem.
Andrea, can I maybe share it from my side? It seems to... Uh, you can do that with the greatest okay. pleasure. Go, Great. go for it. Great. Okay, opening it. There it is. I'm just quickly going to share it. Oh, so it's coming up now. There it Thank is. You. Will that do? That's perfect. Thank you so much. Um, it's just in a PDF, but it's perfect. As long as everybody can see my screen, I'm happy. Um, so thanks very much for that introduction, Prof. Tustin. Um, I would like to take you through um, some information from a variety of research studies that we've conducted um, over the years um, as YDX. Um, and I think very much speaking to what Antoinette has shared with us today in the sense that our youth are very much in crisis and they definitely need our help. Um, and hopefully I can provide some pointers in terms of how you can assist young people today. Um, so I'm going to go through four key sections in my presentation. I'm going to very, very quickly um, explore the generations. I have a full presentation on this available if anybody's interested in understanding generations more. Um, I'm just literally going to do an introduction today um, to, um, to allow you to understand who we're actually talking about. Then I'm going to dive into the potential of Gen Z. Um, and why this generation is so important um, and very much mirror some of the information that Antoinette has um, shared with you earlier on in terms of their study. Then I'd like to go through some challenges facing Gen Zs. And again, you'll see quite a lot of mirroring coming through um, in terms of the information that was shared by Antoinette um, in the study that they conducted um, uh, themselves. And then I'd like to give you some expectations from brands. And in terms of brands here, I'm speaking about companies, organizations, institutions, products, and services, um, which could actually assist the youth. So just as a starting point, um, one of the key things that we've noticed in the research that we've conducted with our young people is that youth align themselves with brands that truly connect to their value system. Um, and it is really, really important for brands, products, services, organizations, and institutions um, to build an emotional connection requiring a deep understanding of the generation and connecting with them where it counts. And hopefully by um, the information that we've shared in today's presentation, you will have a bit more of an understanding in terms of what young people are about today. So I'm, as I said, I'm going to take a little quick deep dive into exploring generations. Um, thanks, Antoinette. Um, so if we look at generations, they are really a group of people born around the same time, exhibiting similar characteristics, preferences, and values over their lifetime. Um, and if we look on the next slide, there are actually four different uh, generations that um, we currently do a lot of research on. Um, the under sevens are very much your alpha generation. Um, then we have Gen Zs, um, which are your eight to 26 year olds. Um, and I will be speaking a little bit more about Gen Zs today to obviously um, dovetail with some of the research findings that Antoinette has shared with you earlier on. Um, Gen Y or millennials are the older um, generation born between the 80s and 90s and between the ages of 24 and 39. And then we have Generation X, um, which are uh, those of us who were born in the 60s and 70s and are in our 40s and 50s. Thanks, Antoinette. Um, I also like to share uh, very, so if we look at the various um, generations that I shared with you earlier on, Gen Zs and millennials and the alpha generation really fit into a variety of different age segments. What we've seen from the research that we've done um, is that it's really important to understand not only the age segments, but also the generations and the behavioral and psychographic segmentations that make up various youth populations. Um, if we look at the under 12, um, they are obviously a generation that specifically needs family and parents for very, very much in their lives. 
Um, and then today I'll be speaking quite um, eloquently with regards to the next four generations, the age of passion, which is your 13 to 15, which are very much your early teenagers, um, the 16 to 18, which are the age of enterprise, the 18 to 24s, um, which are your age of experimentation, and then your 25 to 34, which are the age of contemplation. If you can just go to the next slide, I can just explode on each of these a little bit more. Um, so in terms of your age to 12, the age of ingenuity, um, what is really important about this particular age group, and I know some of the research that Antoinette shared earlier on would have included your 11 and 12 year olds, but it is very important to realize that this particular age group has one foot in teen independence and one foot attached to parents. They are trying so desperately hard to be independent. They are experiencing high levels of peer pressure um, and they are unable to make sensible decisions um, based on the fact that their brains have not been completely developed. They only um, have their brains developing by the age of about 25. Um, so those who are between the ages of 8 and 12 really are struggling to make sensible decisions, which is definitely one of the reasons why you saw um, so much abuse and, uh, and use of various substances um, in the presentation that we had earlier on um, today by Antoinette. Then um, the 13 to 15. Sorry, the 13 to 15, the age of passion is very much also experiencing high levels of pressure or peer pressure. Um, and they are much more similar these days to the previous generation, 16 to 18. Um, they are also in a very important phase in terms of finding themselves. Um, they are very passionately charged by youth spontaneity and an eagerness to become an individual. Um, and again, this, this points to some of the reasons in terms of why some of these age groups, um, you know, start using substances um, like alcohol, smoking, um, or um, drugs of some sort, and obviously are exposed to online sexual exploitation. If we look at the 16s to 18s, um, this is a really important age group in the sense that this age group is more similar to the 19 to 24s than previous generations. They are very much seen as an age of enterprise um, and they are striving to achieve, succeed, find direction and focus. Um, and they are putting a lot of effort and energy into understanding what kinds of decisions they need to be making for the future. Um, and you know, they are growing up in a world gone mad, if you want to call it that, um, but they are really struggling to see where and how they need to put their feet in front of the other um, so that they can obviously go into um, tertiary institutions from an educational perspective or into a work situation. And then your 19th to 24th or the age of experimentation examination is very much um, an interesting age group because we have noticed a large difference between early and late students. Um, it has also come, become quite apparent to us that there are a huge number of needs, um, those youth that are not employed or educated or in any level of training. Um, there are about 3.2 million of them in 2018. Um, and a large number of these 19 to 24s are also trying to put money on the table um, in terms of having a side hustle for an extra income um, or for family income. Then if we look at the potential of Gen Zs, um, so firstly, why are we even bothering with the youth? Um, you know, are they even important? Um, I know um, if you think about some of the stats um, and some of the scary information that Antoinette shared with you earlier on, it is quite frightening sometimes to think about what some of the challenges are that this generation faces. If you can just go to the next slide for me, please. Um, I'd like to just share why the youth is important for a number of reasons. So firstly, it is important in terms of size. Um, in South Africa, and I know in other developing markets as well, we are predominantly made up of a um, highly um, youth population with 64% of our um, population made up of young people who are under the age of 34. Um, the 15 to 18 or the 15 to 34 should I say make up about 20 million people in the South African population which is about 35.1% of our total population which is a really really large 
um, percentage of people um, and should not be ignored because of their size and their numbers. Then the next reason that it is really important to look at um, youth is because of their spend. Um, we conducted some research last year um, through the Gen Re Youth Lifestyle and Spend Study, um, where we picked up that there is a combined spending power of 303 billion rand of your 15 to 34 year olds, which is a really, really big amount of money. Um, and they don't just have their own money to spend, but they also are influencing family spending. Um, they're contributing to the economy both now and obviously for the future. Um, and what is very interesting with even collectively, they have so much more spend, but individually, they often have less spend than generations beforehand. If anybody is interested, um, I have quoted a number of sources um, in terms of the Gen Re study in this particular presentation. And you're welcome to pop me an email um, at the end of the presentation and we can chat further in terms of getting hold of that report. Then if we look at um, another element of why they are important is because of their influence. Um, as I said earlier, they absolutely influence parental spending power, especially with regards to categories such as technology and electronics, finances and telecommunications. Um, these are um, where young people are contributing to family, both with regards to support and financial responsibilities. As I alluded to earlier on, a large percentage of young people are actually contributing financially towards the household. Um, through their side hustles because they have realized that life is obviously really quite um, stressful. Um, and I will touch on that a little bit later. And they are definitely doing things differently and relating to the world a lot more differently than they were in the past. Um, if we look at the challenges facing Gen Zs, um, as I mentioned, some of these will very much dovetail with what Antoinette was speaking about earlier on. The first challenge that this generation is very much facing um, is the macro environment. Um, this generation is absolutely growing up in a very unstable macro environment. They have things to contend with. Obviously, they've just come through COVID like the rest of us. They're also having to deal with load shedding, which is a huge, huge struggle for young people who are trying to um, obviously get an education through school or for, through tertiary institutions. They're dealing with high levels of youth unemployment with 64% of uh, youth unemployment in South Africa at the current moment. And they're also dealing with a very challenging economy. This means that they're living in survival mode, which means that they are significantly stressed. Um, and I know Antoinette absolutely spoke about, you know, their high levels of stress earlier on. Um, but I'd like to just touch on that again and just say that we are absolutely seeing a large prevalence of mental health challenges, um, and there is a really big need to talk about these types of topics. Um, and social media, although it does have very strong negatives um, in terms of cyberbullying, um, which obviously Antoinette shared with you earlier on, does provide a voice to this particular generation in the sense that they have some level of power and control which they can use in a positive manner through social media and the internet. Um, what is quite important for brands to do is to tap into their needs around power, control, and belonging, and to also encourage their need for belonging around providing a safe space for them to be able to gather both physically and virtually. Um, just adding on to the unstable um, environment that I spoke about earlier on, um, I'd like to just touch on um, two words that um, have been doing the rounds. Firstly, millennials were born into the VUCA world, which was a world that was volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Um, and this acronym almost needs to be replaced by a new acronym, which is the Barney world, um, which is very much an acronym for a world that is brittle, anxious, non-linear, and incomprehensible. Um, and in the last one, two, three, five years, the world has infinitely changed. Um, and this has become a very complex world for young people to navigate. Um, and they have heightened feelings of mental health, mindfulness, 
resilience, adaptability, transparency, and intuition. Um, and it's really, really important as brands to encourage positive narrative around mental health conversations, around mindfulness, around resilience, adaptability, and intuition to help some of these young people with some of the challenges that they're actually facing. Um, as I've already touched on mental health, but I've just included some stats here, which you can read through in your own time. Um, in terms of the number of calls that SADAG received with regards to um, uh, young people looking to commit suicide um, between uh, 2021 and 2020, which was obviously when we had COVID, um, but unfortunately this hasn't changed much. We've seen a lot of private tertiary institutions um, and schools um, implementing counseling services for their students and for their learners. Um, and it's really, really important for brands, and I say brands, um, including product services, organizations, institutions, to really try and connect in a meaningful and authentic manner with Gen Zs by supporting this generation through resources and content that allows them to navigate this very strange and scary space of mental health awareness and the high levels of anxiety that they're exhibiting. Um, then World in My Hand is another challenge that they are navigating through. Um, on the one hand, um, they are obviously very technologically literate, as Antoinette shared earlier on. Um, 74, 75% of them are online, predominantly through their cell phones. Um, and by being plugged into the world through their cell phones um, is an opportunity for them to be extended um, it will be an extension of themselves, and they are um, provided with a digital connectivity passport to a wide variety of things. So obviously, we saw some of the negative things that they could be exposed to through cyberbullying, but there's a lot of positives that they can be exposed to as well in terms of education, entertainment, knowledge, creative expression and opportunity for acquisition um, in terms of buying products and services and even in terms of ownership. Um, and global research shows that 75% are more likely to buy a product if they can customize it. Um, it's really important um, that the expectation that this generation has from brands, products and services are met. Um, in terms of your brand, products and services experiences being simplistic, providing a fast turnaround time, providing choice, providing seamless integration, and providing personalization. Um, I'm not going to go through this, but you can read through this list in your own time because I can see that I'm running out of time. Um, if you can just go to the next slide, Anthony. Um, cocooning, um, again, is, you know, another um, a challenge that this generation is facing in the sense that they are moving from technology um, into a space where they are looking more inwards. This generation, because they are so hyper-connected, because they are so much um, connected through social media and social networks, um, are looking to actually connect inwards and are very much wanting to spend more time at home, spend more time with family, um, and are really re-evaluating their values. Um, in terms of some of the key challenges and concerns, one of their biggest, biggest challenges that young people today face is money or finances. They're all struggling to make ends meet. They have a lot of financial security stresses and a lot of anxiety around finances. Um, another one which I alluded to earlier on is education. Um, a large percentage of scholars and students are really struggling um, and stress about finishing their education, whether it is finishing their matric or finishing their further studies. Um, and then, as I mentioned earlier on as well, um, they have a large um, a level of stress in terms of unemployment. Um, and we did some research where 36% of 18 to 24-year-olds have lost their jobs during the pandemic and are still unemployed. <laughs> so during this time of huge uncertainty, um, again, I encourage you as brands, products, and services to provide safe space.
places um, for this generation to be seen and heard. Young people have a fixer mindset. I'll just touch on this really briefly. They are definitely in the kind of mindset where they are self-reliant. Um, we did some research last year through the Gen Re study, um, and we really saw that this generation is looking for answers themselves. You would have seen it through the research that Antoinette shared earlier on as well, um, where they're often um, going online, looking for information, and that's where they potentially are getting confronted by um, cyberbullying or sexual exploitation. Um, and what is really important um, in terms of them having this, self, uh, this level of self-reliance is for us as brands to encourage conversations with young people around topics that resonate with them. So whether it's around you know, positive things, so demystifying adulting, how to be successful, how to do a successful side hustle, demystifying mental health issues, those kinds of things. Let's give them some support um, in terms of navigating this online space. Speaking about trust, um, the, what is very important is that young people absolutely trust their inner circle, which is their close friends and family. They are much less likely to trust big business, governments, and institutions. And again, I feel it is really important um, for brands, products, and services to build authentic stories and positive experiences into your brand so that um, young people have a positive experience with um, your brand um, and not um, only um, look to trusting their close family and friends. And then self-preservation is really the values breach, um, which is very much around um, as I mentioned earlier on, changing the narrative around um, mental health um, and what can your brand do to authentically show up, share and demonstrate your or their values. Um, they are really looking for values where they're going back to basics. This young generation, this Gen Z, are looking for brands that support and share and demonstrate their values. Um, my family first, I've already spoken about, so I won't go through that again. Um, and then just some expectations for brands. I've touched on some of these already. I'm very conscious of time. Um, so I just want to touch on a couple here. Um, so what I'll touch on on this slide is authenticity, the need for brands, products, and services to be authentic, um, the opportunity to collaborate positively, the importance of sustainability, um, for them to be treated as an important um, generation and important consumer segment. For you to deliver the basics of your products and services impeccably, for you to be a trustworthy brand, for you to be transparent, honest, simplistic, adaptable, and about empowerment in terms of helping and supporting them, not just from a monetary perspective, but in terms of having positive conversations that young people feel supported in navigating this very scary space that they're living in. And then lastly, um, they are expecting to be always on. They're expecting brands to be authentic and original. Um, and they, as I mentioned, are expecting support and advice. Um, and if you would like to get hold of me, my email address is on the screen. Super happy to help with any other research that you might need on Gen Zs. And I'm going to hand over to Prof. Tuscan um, to take us into the next stage of the webinar. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you for sharing that. And I think just from our experience, no brand loyalty is really uh, evident anymore. If you can put something better on the table nowadays, I think the youth will take on the opportunities. So, Antoinette, I want to come back to yourself and Andrea um, to maybe just have a quick chat with the younger thinking minds. Um, I'm not sure if they entered the vault yet, Antoinette. Yes, Guato's yes, um, on and Sibu Sisiwe is on. I think Future's been kicked off. Um, she just sent me a message. Okay, okay. wonderful. Can they just maybe raise their hands so that I can just unmute them, please, our young participants? If you can just put up your, raise your hand, then I can unmute you. Uh, because, I, ah, wonderful, there the hands is going up very fast. Sibu Sisiwe, let me just quickly unmute you we would love you to participate in the discussion there you are 
Great. Hello. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. I have two hands here. Andrea, the did color I? Is, um, are you, uh, um, is that future or are you just using someone else's phone or are you just putting your hand up by mistake? And Tobias as well. It's Sibu Sisiwe and Nguato, definitely. And then future, as I said, has been bombed out, unfortunately. Okay, great. Let's go uh, and, and let's have a lovely dis if discussion. You can unmute the one that says yeah. N Matilela. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. Let me just go back Thank here. Thank you. In Masilela. Right. It's unmuted. Amazing. Thank you so much. Do you want to kick off, uh, Antoinette? Yes, yes. If they can maybe just turn on, on their cameras, that will also be great. Thank you. If it's too difficult for you guys, then let's just go without that. Um, I'm not sure how the signal is going to hold up, but I think, Antoinette, maybe do you want to start with the first question? Yes, thank you so much for joining us today. And we definitely want our young people to be part of our initiatives and our webinars and all our gatherings. I would like you guys just to point out to me today what was actually the most important thing that we discussed here today. What really touched you um, that you feel, wow, this is really happening in my life. This is really something I want uh, more attention to be placed on. If you can maybe just come in and share that with us. Sibu Sisu? where do you want to start? Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Um, from what I have heard, I think um mostly the issue of our brains um focusing on what the the youth wants mostly. Most of the brains out there they don't really care about what uh, the youth really want. They just focus on um getting sales, they don't really focus on engaging with us. As I've seen here, uh, part of the slideshow, it was saying that the youth, they influence how uh, the products are being bought. So I think it's very important for brands to actually um, engage with us. Um, ask us, what is it that we want? Um, are we okay with this product or we want certain changes? I think that would be something that would be great for us. And to next, sorry, would you mind um, unmuting Future's mic as well? Future, if you could just put your hand up, or I think let her in first and then unmute her mic. Sorry. Just see, uh, Can you see her, Antoinette? I don't see her uh, on, the, on the screen. I only see two hands, three hands up now. Future, if you can hear us, would you just put your hand up, please? Okay, um, let's go to the next question. Sorry, I just saw that she wanted to get in. Um, so I'm going to ask Nguato this question, um, but I'd like to understand um, what do you think is the biggest issue that young people in South Africa face right now? Hello. Hi, Naguato. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, so, uh, I'm having the question: What do you think is the biggest issue that young people in South Africa face right now? I would say, I would say, um, in terms of, um, in terms of like the world which you mentioned in your, in your, um, what is it? Um, um, research, right? Is that, um, yeah, uh, there's, there's a lot of, how can I put it? Um, the unemployment rate, which is so high, which, which gives the youth more, more depression. They think like, um, uh, we think we are in a world whereby um, it's not the same as it was 
um, long ago. So now we feel as if like um, um, the current situation which we are living in, the world doesn't matter. It doesn't show any kind of care to us at the moment. Right. And, uh, they don't do, they don't uh, produce anything whereby uh, you, you can feel, can feel that like uh, they're being taken care of or they're being, um, uh, how can I put it? It, it's a lot of like, like, um, it's a lot of um, impact which are happening around us, education, finance. Uh, even though you are successful with your education, in terms of getting, getting, getting uh, employed, it's kind of hard for us, and um, which also leads us to, to a lot of stress and depression. And, and, and now, now like, like, it's a thing whereby as, as we, it's something which needs to be changed. It's something which needs to be changed so that uh, absolutely we, yes so that um, absolutely in Guato. yes yes so yeah I thank you very much for your contribution um sorry Antoinette could you just unmute future did you see her note it says future Sibanda and you can ask her the mm -hmm. third question. I don't see on my screen, Andrea. I only see the two participants. So I think we. So we if you so yes. hands not up. If you mm -hmm. just scroll down in alphabetical order, it says future Sibanda. Just check again. Future Sibanda under Dr. Tozama Kwebani. <laughs> Not winning. I'm not seeing her on my screen. Sorry. Okay, I only no see problem. The two hands no problem. Your... Oh, no problem. Do you want to ask the, the, another question? There's a last question from me before we end the webinar with a few, maybe a, just a, 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 a summary of what we've said here today. I just would like to know, is there one thing that you would, what if there's one thing that you can change to make things better for young people in South Africa? What can we do to make things back better? What can we change for young people in South Africa? Besides creating more employment, that's definitely a, a touching point to develop skills. What can we do to make things better for young people like yourself in South Africa? Thank you so much to our youth participants. Peter, do you want to go first? Can I? Yes, oh. yes. I... Hi. Go for it, Peter. Then can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Future. Oh, thank you very much. I've been struggling. Okay. Uh, besides employment and, and and everything else, um, I think uh, as South Africa, we have to encourage entrepreneurship amongst the youth. Because then uh, if the youth is well versed about uh, entrepreneurship, then they can start their own businesses and then they'll know how to sustain themselves for a better future. And then as well, when they get that employment, uh, I'll scratch off uh, the no experience and no job uh, activity in companies. I mean, I only finished college, uh, but you want five years experience uh, from me, how am I going to get it? I'm not sure. Hundred percent. Thank you very, very much. Very good point, Future. Thank you. Ngwato, do you, you want to give us your views? Yes, uh, I would say uh, besides creating employment, I would say um, how about creating uh, something like uh, um, a platform whereby um, whereby businesses can and brands can listen to to the youth. Because uh, I feel like. Um, um, they just they just uh, create things from what they think other than listening to the youth. Uh, if maybe uh, they could have, if maybe we could have like I don't know, surveys, surveys or something, something bigger than that, which could reach a large a large portion of youth members, whereby our voice can speak loudly 
to what we would want, and then we would um, we could work on what we want with the brand, so that like uh, we both uh, listen to each other and we reach an agreement, and then we see for what what can be catered. And also, I would like to say, um, Naguato, that's very important. You need to have a voice as young people, and I think that's why we try to include you in this webinar today. Um, I just want to ask people to see where very quickly to give your views before we hand over to Antoinette again. Okay, no problem. Um, as for me, I think uh, tackling the issue of mental health. Um, many youth these days, they uh, really suffer from depression, anxiety. Um, it would be very great if there is a platform whereby people they go to uh, and they have their issues resolved because most of the people they rely on social media when they post their um, issues on social media in most cases uh, the feedback that they get is mostly negative or is information that's um, wrong so it will be very great if as the youth we get a place or a platform whereby uh, we go to and we talk about our issues and also how to handle stress management as it is one of the biggest problems. We really don't know how to handle stress and we end up uh, maybe going to doing drugs or drinking alcohol to relieve stress. So it would be great to have a uh, such platform. Thank Absolutely, you so thank you for that. Very important. Thank you so much to our youth participants for joining us today. Unfortunately, we have limited time. We already went over our time, but you touch on so many important things like unemployment, mental health, stress management. So thank you so much. We value your contribution. Over to you, Prof. Thank you to all the conversationalists uh, and you two leading the conversation and for the youth uh, sharing their voice as well. I think it's always important that these sessions to open our ears to also engage with them directly and I appreciate all your efforts. Colleagues, I did look at the meeting chat box. Uh, most of it on Tunet, Andrea, relates to whether the um, presentations will be shared. I confirmed that already. And also in terms of any reports, access to reports, and we will most certainly uh, share those and also make available um, the report and, and access to the reports in the format that you would uh, engage with our colleagues as well that's in, in, in the online uh, session this morning. There was one technical question on the net on the type of questions being asked in the survey, um, but I also think one can probably uh, just touch up, uh, touch base with the people asking those questions. I don't see any pertinent questions, if except if I have anyone in the audience and I really appreciate your patience. Of, of staying online. Uh, but if there's any pertinent questions, I will take one or two. Um, otherwise, I would just like Antoinette and Andrea maybe just to briefly summarize in terms of your conversations with the youth as well. And maybe you had opportunity just to guide yourself through to the through the um, meeting chat box comments as well. Do I see any pertinent hands, colleagues, or are you covered with those that I try to address in the meantime? I just see one of the last comments here, children's basic needs are just to be loved and accepted and have a sense of belonging. I think that's well put. Thank Absolutely. you, Marina. Um, and then I think a, a lot of thank you notes here to both of you, uh, being a conversationalist today here and also insightful, empowering the comments and the side notes here as well. So I don't know, Antoinette, from your side, maybe a last uh, comment and then Andrea, and then I think we will close the seminar and we will agree to the colleagues that's joining this morning that we will engage with them in the aftermatch uh, to see and in, 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 conversations never ends in the aftermatch of a, of a seminar now. So we will definitely encourage emails coming in as well in follow up of the work that you've been sharing. Dr. Basson, I'm starting with you and then Andrea and then we will close. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you so much, Prof, and thank you for your wonderful facilitation of our webinar this morning. Wow, an hour is just not enough to talk about young people and children in South Africa, but I think, Prof, we definitely touched on very important issues this morning. It was just to give the audience a glimpse of our latest research information and our collaboration with Andrea to bring in her insights as well. Thank you so much to everybody who attended this morning, and like Prof said, we are always available. You're welcome to 
reach out to us. We will communicate with you on email. And definitely thank you to our youth participants. You always highlight the most important issues to us, which are also important for us to focus on in all our research activities as well. So from my side, Prof, just a big, big thank you. And yes, definitely, we will make the report available. We are finalizing the, our report and hopefully there will be much more um, research coming on these topics as well. Over to you, Andrea. Thank you so much, Antoinette. It was absolutely lovely to be part of the webinar. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, and I just feel that it's really important that we have more of these kinds of conversations about young people and empowering companies and brands to support young people um, in this very challenging world that everybody's living in. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. I'm ending with the following words. May the month of June be full of youthful entertainment and let us celebrate and appreciate our youth, our future. Thank you, colleagues, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Andrea. Sorry, I'm calling you. I'm just worried people are not leaving the vault. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I think it went well. And my apologies. I think we on load shedding and my computer is extremely slow, so I couldn't give you the ability to share.